What's up everybody? Welcome back or to the channel. So today we're going to be starting the first modification that I'm going to be doing to the new bike build. Now if you haven't seen the introduction video of the bike, this is a 2016 Street Glide Special. I picked it up used with very low miles, garage kept, mint condition, and this is going to be my new bike build for my personal bike. Now if you see over here, that's my last bike build. That's a 2010 Dyna Wide Glide. That's one of my favorite bikes. I think it's a great bike. I've had a lot of fun building it. But I am ready for something bigger and something more suited for longer trips, which is why we got this bike over here. Now, for any of you that don't know, I'm a tall guy, six foot three, 270 pounds. I never really liked the touring bikes for the main reason is that I just never felt like they fit my tall frame that comfortably compared to something like the wide glide that's a little bit more stretched out. But I do really wanna give the Touring a shot. I really like them and I want to make this bike work for me. So I have a lot of parts coming in the mail. So if you're interested in watching this bike build, make sure you subscribe to the channel because there's gonna be a lot of videos to come. So today's modification is gonna be a little bit more important to me because I'm taller, I have longer legs, and I have bigger feet at around 12 and a half. So, what we're gonna be doing is extending the foot controls with extended foot control arms made by Kuriakin. So without further ado, let's jump in and take a closer look. So what I'm referring to is the brake here and the shifter on the left side, right here, okay? Now the problem that I have is if you look, so when I get on the bike and I'm riding, at a normal, comfortable level. You see how my toes go underneath the brake? So when I'm trying to drive, I got my legs tucked in against the gas tank, but when I'm trying to drive, I can't easily access the brake. So I have to either take my foot out and then around and up, or I basically have to pull my foot back and then lift up and then tuck it up under here. So it's this right here that drives me crazy. The same thing applies over here but not as bad because the shifter tip is not as big. So it's usually not as bad on the shifter, okay? But it's the brake that's worse, but I figure while I'm at it, I'm gonna extend both. So what we're gonna be using today is this right here, okay? I got the Kuriakin girder shift lever, which is about roughly an inch and a half or so longer than the stock one. And I got the Kuriakin extended brake lever as well. It was hard to find an exact match for both, but from what I was able to find online, these were the closest I could find where they sort of follow the same theme where they have the cutouts in the middle. So we're gonna go with that. Okay, so here is the Kuriakin extended girder shift lever in a chrome finish. Okay, it's really hard to find these in a black finish. And if you do, they might not look like this. They might be something different. And there's a lot of knockoff parts out there. And I didn't want to get a knockoff part when it came to my brake and my shifter. So I wanted to go with a company that's pretty well known, which Kuriakin is. Now this one here, I don't know if that matters. It's the 1026 dash chrome, okay? And I will put the link in the description of where I got these. Okay, nothing really inside. Just some basic instructions here, I guess. Tells you a little bit about it, so we'll get into that in a little bit. Let's open this up. But it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory here. Okay, there you go. So this one is gonna be a little bit longer than the stock one, okay? And if we go over there and just sort of take a little look, you can see what, I'm, what I mean. If we line it up, you see how it's a little further, probably about an inch and a half. I think that's gonna make a big difference. So we have that, and here's the brake. This is the Kuriakin girder extended brake pedal, okay? And I don't know if there's a, there we go. This is the 9642-Chrome. Let's go ahead and open this one up. Same thing, got your instructions in here. Couple foam blocks. Okay. And there you go there. 
So this thing looks real good right here. Now it says your stock pad should work, but if it works, fantastic. If it doesn't, I'll just get an extended pad that's bigger to fit this better. But let's take a closer look at how this stacks up. Now this one's kind of hard to level up a little bit, but you can kind of see if we just level it up there, it's gonna be like that, okay? And I do believe based on the size of the, the brake pad here, it should fit no problem. It's just one simple bolt. So we should be able to do that without a problem. Now, again, like I mentioned earlier, if you like to see a lot of different modifications from a bike that's pretty much stock. Now I do have the slip-ons here that came with the bike when I bought it. Everything else is pretty much stock. I have a lot going on with this bike with a lot of plans. So just make sure you subscribe to the channel and stay tuned because there's a lot coming to this bike. So let me go ahead and put this down. Okay, so first thing we got to do is take off some of the old parts. So we're probably going to have to start with taking off the footrest. So what we're going to do is take off these two bolts here and here, which is right here and right there. And this whole footbed should pop right off. Now I imagine these are going to be on there very tight. So they're probably going to be a little bit hard to crack loose, but we'll get them loose without a problem. Then we're going to have to loosen up the shifter and then pull the pin on the back, which can also be a little bit tricky, but we'll get into that in a second. So let me go ahead and grab some tools and let me go see if we can get this taken care of. Okay. So let's just go ahead and start with the bottom bolts here on the footrest. I'm just using a half inch socket with a number eight hex bit here. So let's see if we can get these broken loose, which I imagine is gonna be pretty tight. Ah, that's not too bad. Okay, let me get something on the back there and let's get this thing cranked out. Okay. Keep that put together there. Let's get the other one here. Okay, so I had to use a little bit of a longer eight mil hex key here just to get a little better leverage. All right, let's see if we can get this in there now. There we go. Okay, so we got that foot pad off. This bottom bolt here, that was a pain. That thing was really tight. It was definitely gripped in there. This one here was pretty easy, but the one in here at the bottom was really tight. So you're gonna have to use a little bit of uh, elbow grease with that. So I ended up getting a little bit of a longer eight mil hex bar here to get in there and get a little bit of leverage, which worked just to kind of break it loose. And then I was able to get it out the rest of the way with my socket. All right, let's see what else we got under here. So to get the brake lever off, you're gonna have to break this loose here, which again is probably gonna be very tight. So make sure you take your time with that. And then right up here, if I can get my camera into there. Okay, right there, right where my finger's pointing, there's a little cotter pin. I can't get my camera down in there, sorry but right here, right where I'm pointing, there's a little cotter pin that you're gonna have to get back there with some needle nose pliers and bend it, the cotter pin, cause it's one of those uh, split cotter pins. So you would pinch the two tails together, pull the cotter pin out, and then you can release this pin right here, slide that out. Loosen that up, we'll pop this whole thing right off. All right, so let me get working on that and I'll be right back. It's a little tricky getting to that cotter pin just because there's no room to get to it. All right, I think I got that. Okay, so I was able to get that cotter pin there. There looks to be a little washer on the back, so make sure you get that. Be careful. Again, there's not a whole lot of room here. Sorry, I gotta put the camera down, guys. I just can't fit everything in here at one time. Give me one second. Okay. I don't think that thing drop out the 
bottom. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I got that off, but the pin fell right here and I can't quite get to it. All right, well, I'll get the pin. It fell back there, but I'll get the pin here in a second. Let's get this off. Okay, this one here looks like a 16 mil will work. Okay, so we're gonna try to get that off. Got this cheap little socket here. All right. washer off okay then this should once I get that cotter pin in the back popped out there we go okay and this should just kind of slide out but you're gonna have to slide it out and angle it to get this wing right here around your exhaust. So it's just gonna take a little bit of finesse. Okay, so what you're gonna to wanna to do is if you have crash bars, you're probably gonna to have to take the crash bars off. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide it out and rotating it forward just slightly until it comes close to your exhaust and then rotate it forward and it pops right off. Okay, now let me see if I can find that cotter pin because I know it fell down in here. There it is right there. Okay, and then here's what the cotter pin looks like. So you got your pin, a washer on the back, and then your cotter pin goes like that. Okay, so we're gonna hold that right here. Next, we're gonna go ahead and take off the pad here. So we're gonna go just grab a wrench here, like so. And I'm just using a 13 mil ratcheting wrench. Loosen that up. So you got your nut, big washer. Okay, there's your pad. Okay, so we got that off. Okay, dokey. Okay, so now is probably a good time. I would just say grab a little rag, a little detail spray, give everything a nice little wipe, clean everything off real good, you know. Because it's not too often you take this apart. Okay, clean it up a little bit. Wipe this off. If you really, really want to, you could take some steel wool to it if it's dirty or a little bit of surface rust, but just be careful that you don't ruin the chrome finish because that's protecting everything. So I'm not too, too worried about it because eventually I might buy a new brake pad anyways. So we're gonna go ahead and put that back on there. Make sure it's nice and clean like that. Now let me go grab the new brake lever. Okay. Then what we're gonna do is go ahead, put the brake pad onto the new lever. And another thing I really like about this lever, I mean, look at that finish. I mean, this is beautiful. But here at the bottom, you have a grease fitting. So you can actually throw some grease in here too, which the stock one does not have that. So that's really nice there. So again, let's go ahead, get this mounted on the back like so. Oh, there it is, fits perfectly. Okay, we got that nice and snug down. All right, there we go there. So let's see what we got here. The kit comes with a brand new cotter pin, so we're gonna use that. So you do not need this rubber O-ring that comes off the factory one. This is not needed, but you do need the washer and the bolt. So let's go ahead, do the same thing we did. To get it off, we're just gonna head, slide it forward, rotate it, into position. 
like so. Okay, now what we gotta do is get our pin back in the back right here. So let's go ahead and see if we can get that in there. Because again, that's not, you can move the master cylinder, but I really don't wanna mess with that. I'm trying to do this without doing that. Okay, got that in. Now we gotta find where our hole is. Okay, I see it. Let's see if we can rotate that a little bit. I'm just using some needle nose to rotate this pin so that the hole is visible for the cotter pin. Then I'm gonna go ahead, reach under, put my little washer back in, which again, not very easy to get to, so take your time, you know? I'll use some needle nose, that might be easier. Okay, got the cotter pin in. And then what we're gonna do is go underneath, spread the little tabs. All right, got that done. Now we just gotta throw our washer back on. Sliding it back on, take my nut, put it back on. Now again, I typically would recommend using some blue Loctite at these applications here, like this bolt and on your foot pads. But because I have other modifications coming in the next week or so, and it's winter time really, I'm not really gonna be driving this bike too much uh, over the next couple weeks with Christmas. I'm just gonna leave everything pretty much tight, but I'm not gonna lock tight it down, mainly because I might have to take this stuff back off to do some of the other modifications that I plan on doing. So let's just go ahead and get this tightened down. All right, and like everything else, I don't. Have, I usually don't always go with a torque wrench. So if you want to deal with torque specs, go ahead. I wait till it's tight and I give it a little bit of a snug pass tight. And then that does the job for me. Okay, that looks like it's on. So let's go ahead, get our footboard back on. Okay, I'm just putting that hand tight for now. Okay. Okay. We'll just get this snug for a second. Tighten up the first one. Again, I just want to take it a little past snug. Okay. Okay. And then we're just going to go ahead and slap in a little bit of grease. Right there is what it looks like okay everything's on everything's nice and tight let's get and see how my foot lines up now that's better see now I have a lot more foot room and then I can easily just slide up hit the brake slide back this is a lot easier because I'm a, what I was afraid of is in an emergency situation where I have to hit the brake fast. Now, yes, I'm usually using my front brake a lot more than the back brake, but in case of an emergency, I didn't want my toe getting caught up from being under here like it was on the factory one. 
Now I have full range of foot motion and I can easily reach the brake. Good to go. So that right there is the Kuriakin girder extended brake lever in a chrome finish. It does accept the factory brake pad. It was pretty simple and easy. Again, it should only take you about 15 minutes tops to do this modification. But overall, I really, really like the finish of it. It looks awesome. And I really like that my foot has more free range of motion. So now let's go to the other side and let's get that gear shifter taken care of. Okay, so now that we're on the gear shift side, this is a little bit easier. You do not necessarily have to take the foot pad off because everything's accessible right here. Then you just want to take this hex bolt out here. I found using a quarter inch was most snug. Just go ahead, crank that loose like that. Loosen this shifter up. There we go. Okay, now that we got that off, then what I gotta do, throw another Allen wrench here. That way I can loosen up this bolt, take this peg off. We'll put it on the new Kiriak and extension shift lever and we'll get it mounted back up the same exact way we took it off. Let me go take care of that and I'll be right back. Okay, so we are done. We got the new Kiriak and extended gear shifter installed. Everything is kind of where I want it. Now, when you reinstall this and you're sliding it back on the grooves, now is a good time to adjust where you want your shift lever at based on your foot size, based on the boots or shoes you typically wear, because now you can either raise it up or down to your liking. But I believe this is kind of where I want it at its very lowest, because obviously my foot's not going under it at its very lowest. That's gonna be down in first gear. But right here, my foot slides perfectly underneath of it. So let me show you now what it looks like. Now again, I'm wearing shoes today, but a lot of times I'm wearing boots, but here you go. Look, I have full clearance now on my foot, and all I gotta do is slide up, hit it, slide back, step on it, I can slide up. I no longer have to worry about if my foot's sitting here, I'm not gonna get caught up on the shifter. I have plenty of room now to kind of slide my foot up a little bit, get a little bit more leg room, because the way it was before, my foot had to sit pretty much like this, and the gear shifter was right at my toes, like I showed you earlier, it wasn't super bad, but because I have longer legs, now I can actually stretch my feet out a little bit more and get a little bit more leg room, which is awesome. I can get up here, shift, everything's good to go. So really happy with it so far. Let me go ahead, take it for a quick spin, and uh, I'll be right back. Safety's first. Let me go ahead and grab my helmet, and uh, I'll be right back. So we're back and I just got back on my first ride up the street and came back and that works perfect. I have plenty of room now for my feet uh, to stretch out a little bit again because I do have longer legs and I typically wear about a 12 and a half shoe. I have a little bit more flexibility in where I put my foot on the foot pad. I can stretch them out a little bit forward. I can move them back. I can kind of get a little bit more control with my legs. If I really wanna grip my legs around the tank a little bit when I'm cornering, I don't have to worry about necessarily where my foot is on the pad. And if my foot is underneath the shifter, I have a little bit more flexibility now. So again, first impressions of the first ride using the Kuriakin extended girder shifter and Kuriakin extended girder brake lever. Fantastic, I really like the extra length. Now again, if you're a shorter person and have smaller feet, probably don't need to be worrying about this modification. But again, this modification is primarily for those that have longer legs and have typically a size 12 or larger shoe, okay? 
Now, the reason I say longer legs and not taller is because some people are taller in their torso but have shorter legs. But what I'm referring to is if you're a taller person with longer legs and you have maybe a size 12 or larger shoe, I would highly recommend the Kiriakin Extended Girder Brake Lever and the Kiriakin Extended Girder Shift Lever. So there you go. Overall, the installation was extremely simple. The old parts came off with a few bolts. The new parts went on with a few bolts. Very simple and easy, but the benefit is phenomenal. Again, I'm a taller guy with a 12 and a half shoe. Having those extended levers really gives me more foot control because my feet don't get jammed up underneath the levers as they did on the stock levers. So these extended ones just gives me more flexibility in where I put my foot on the floorboard. It gives me a little bit of flexibility with how I shift and where I position my legs. So there it is. My initial impressions of the Kuriakin girder extended levers for the brake and the shifter, I give it a thumbs up, I give it a go. If you're a taller person, have longer legs and maybe a size 12 or larger shoe, I highly recommend checking these parts out. They're a breeze to put on, but they work phenomenal. And I am really happy with this purchase. So that's it for today's video. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, like this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And do me a favor, subscribe to the channel because it definitely helps me out. And there's gonna be a lot more modifications coming to this bike here in the near future. So again, I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you. I truly appreciate all of your support. Thank you. And as always, see you in the next video.